Yes, hello, how are you doing? Greetings. Yes, my name is Jin, Jin Mark Kaboha, and I'd like to walk you through the concepts of React, React's virtual DOM and how it's used to your advantage, what exactly it is, Redux, state management, and the one-way data flow in Redux. So let's start off with React. So React is a very powerful and one of the most popular widely used library. Many people think it's actually a library, not a framework. And it's a library that is used for helping you have better UIs, manipulating a very good UI using your JavaScript. Now, a very good use case for React, why we use it, if we look at how, how, how it is made, it is declarative, it's component-based, filled with reusable components. Now, a component is just a JavaScript function. There are two types, class-based and functional-based. Now, now those components have what we call a render method that returns something that looks like XML, but it's actually JSX. It's JavaScript, but it looks like HTML. I can show you a simple example of a component. If you look at the app component here, you can see this, this looks like HTML. You're seeing the divs, but it's actually JavaScript extensible. It's JSX. So now, why do we, why, why do we use this? You see, Re React has what we call the virtual DOM. Virtual DOM is a representation of the real DOM. It's a virtual representation of the real DOM. Now, if you look at a normal DOM, DOM is a document object model. It's just like the UI, the whole application state in the body, the, the tree, the different divs, the navs, all of those tags, just your whole UI. And whenever it is changed, it is a cost to the application. So if there are many DOM changes, it's expensive. If you have a big application and many updates are happening on your UI at the same time, it's extremely expensive. The beauty is that with React in the virtual DOM, it doesn't change the DOM. When you make a change, it changes a virtual position of the DOM. And React keeps on comparing. One, it's like you've made a change to the virtual DOM. The next time you make a change, it's like a new virtual DOM is compared with the old virtual DOM. Not the, and on and on and on. So many different steps. It's like screenshots of, of, of uh, a virtual DOM have been taken. And at the end, it is what we call an exp exponential uh, differential algorithm, a process called diffing, to track all of the changes. And then at that only point, it only the DOM, it updates the real DOM, but only the parts that need to change, not everything. So that is the beauty of React and the virtual DOM. So now why do we need Redux? Okay, Redux is also a library that helps you managing application state with one global state, one single source of truth. See, when React applications grow, it becomes difficult. It can increase in complexity, managing different state in, in all of the components. But now Redux, that's where it comes in to help. You can manage your application state once in one place, one single source of truth. Now, let me, now let me show you how that works. Biamukama. Now, let me show you how that works. So here we have what we call reducers, reducers, and we have our store. Now, initially when an application is being initialized, you have your, all of your reducers are combined in the store. You create the store based on the initial state and it gives an initial state for your application. So an application has one state, one initial state. Then in case of any changes or updates, an action is triggered, and now this action, an action is just an object which has a type. And yeah, now this action is triggered, and now the reducer takes in this action and the current state. And based on that, it either returns the current state or it's going to create a new state because state is immutable. We're not supposed to change the state. It creates a new state, and then the parts of your application that are listening, they're listening for those changes that are subscribed to them are the ones that are going to get updated. Only those components are going to get updated based on this new state. And now only those changes are going to be re-rendered. So that's how it goes, the Redux one-way data flow. Your reducer and state, initial state has been made. Then an action is dis dispatched and the reducer takes in that action and based on the action is going to change the, the, the initial state in the store. And now the store is going to have the objects listening which have subscribed to it the particular bits of the state, and it's going to re-render them. So that's how Redux has helped me to have that simple one place where state is for ease of the application. Thank you.